us bow our heads. Father God, as once again we come before thy presence. Father, we come saying thank you. Father, we thank you this morning for our mothers that are here and those that have gone on. Father, for those who mothers have gone on, they still have the memories. We thank you for the memories, Father. Father, we thank you for the health and strength of each and every one that's present this morning. Father, we thank you for those that are lying in hospital rooms, locked in prison cell, men and women that are serving in foreign lands. Father, we thank you and we ask your blessing on the bereaved family. We ask that you just keep your arms of protection around each and every one of us and lead and guide us where you would have us to go. We ask a special prayer for our pastor and his family. Father, we ask that you continue to let him go into your word that he may stand before that people and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, that some sinner that's lost might come saying, what must I do to be saved? Father, we thank you for each and every one that are present this morning, those that are on their way and to our internet visitors. Father, we ask a special blessing on all mothers. Father, we know that some mothers are going through some trying times. But Father, you are trying God and all they have to do is try you and see how you would work it out. Father, we ask a special blessing on our seniors who have gotten a little old, whose steps have gotten a little short, Father, but their faith is still strong in you. Father, we ask as we go through this day that you will be with each and every one of us. Father, we ask that you will bless each and every one of us. And Father, we will be so careful and mindful to give you all the praise and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say amen. 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 amen.
when your spirit speaks to me, then my answer will be yes. Amen. It's that time in the service that we would like to recognize anyone who may be visiting with us for the very first time. If you are a first time visitor, will you please stand and remain standing to be recognized? Good morning, Central. Good morning. Good morning. It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It's offering time in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Will you stand to your feet as we ask God's blessing on what we're about to bring and present to him? Malachi, the third chapter. God said, will a man rob God? We said, wherein have we robbed thee? And he answers in tithes and offerings. Tells us to bring the tithes and offerings into the storehouse that they may be for thy peoples and prove me. Now we have said the Lord of hosts that I would not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you should not have room enough to receive it. Second Corinthians tells us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. So let us come with a cheerful heart. Let us bow our heads. Father God, in the name of blessed name of Jesus, Lord, we come saying thank you. Father, we thank you that we have the privilege now to bring back to you your tithes and our offering. Father, we are stepping out on your words this morning where you said you would open the windows of heaven and you will pour us out a blessing. We should not have room enough to receive it if we would do what you have asked us to do. So, Father, when we come, let us come for a cheerful heart because you said you love a cheerful giver. Father, let us come, and we ask that you bless each and every one who's able to give. Bless those who wish to give but have not. And we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name, that you would make it possible too, that they can bring back to you your tithes and your offering. And Father, we ask that we continue to remember the capital campaign, because Father, we are trying to do great works in your name. So, Father, we ask that you just touch the heart of each and every one, those who are able to give and those who wish they have to give. And, Father, we'll be so careful in mind to give you all the praise and all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's children say amen. 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 Center pews face each other. Outside pews face the walls. And please wait for the direction of our senior ushers.
Amen. We love the Lord and say amen again. If you know whatever the problem, that he can work it out for you. Give God a hand clap of praise in this building. Thank you, Reverend Dixon. Thank you, choir, for that selection. Amen. There's a spirit of worship that's in the air. And we know it is the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Our upcoming church events, and we thank God for the presence of our presiding officer, Reverend Kenneth Wilson, for the presence of worship with that so there, Reverend Leroy Butler, pastor, founder, teacher of the Bell Memorial Baptist Church, and Sister John and May, we thank God so much for you, the first lady of Bell Memorial. Thank God for each and every one of you who are present with us on this day. We're reminding all of our high school graduates to get your contact information in. Our 2019 graduates, <laughs> please get your contact information in for our recognition during our College Day program. Our report cards are due for this marking period, the third marking period. The deadline is May the 14th at 5 p.m. Our report cards are due in. And then our Women's Day luncheon will be held on this Saturday coming up. Reverend Veronica Bell, a pastor of the New Samaritan Baptist Church. Veronica will be the preacher for the luncheon. She's somebody's preacher. Amen. Amen. Let's take note of this for you right now. Our annual revival begins Monday, May the 20th. Uh, when I arrived at Central Baptist Church 22 years ago, that revival was in May, so I left it in May. I didn't change anything. It worked for me. Amen. Monday after the third Sunday begins in May at 7 o'clock p.m. Remember I said we don't have a bunch of choirs and things. People are coming to your house. You ought to be at home. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. The worst thing that could happen to me if I go back home now and find somebody at my house. When I left the house, the house was empty. Somebody gonna be there, I don't know. And I'm not even there to receive the guests that come to my house. It used to be revival was big meeting day where everybody planned the activity and the time we came together, amen. Now it's a little bit different this year. Take note of it, we're beginning Monday through Wednesday. This is the pastor, we normally go Monday through Thursday. You can come on Thursday if you want to. <laughs> We're going to be here Monday through Wednesday. Amen, somebody. Amen. I learned that you don't have to drag things out all week long. You may try to wear yourself out, wear the people out. Amen. Monday through Wednesday. Amen, somebody. Please, ma'am, please, sir, bring a friend with you. You ought to at least be able to get somebody to come out one night with you doing revival. Every time you look around when people have some, they inviting you. Who are you inviting? <laughs> Do you have one person that you know that you can get to come with you? Now, revival is for the week will be Dr. Donald E. Green. Dr. Green is my friend, and he's the president of our state E&M Baptist Convention. He's a pastor at Andrew Chapel Baptist Church uh, in Santee, suburban in Orangeburg, I call it. And Green is somebody's preacher. He was with us on last year. And he'll be back with us on this year, Monday through Thursday. And the choir rotation has changed a little bit. On Monday night, we're having the Jubilee Choir and the Mayo Chorus start devotion at 7 o'clock. I'll come out by 7, 27, 25. I don't care how happy you get, turn it over to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. You know, we'll say, I'm all in the spirit. The spirit ain't going to lead you to go past 730. So. Let the church say amen. amen. We serve an orderly God. So. If you go past that time, that's you. Because everybody's saying, you should sound. Turn it over. 725, you should be coming down. When I come out, get ready to turn over so we can start at 7.30. Things ought to be done decently and in order. Amen. Monday night, Jubilee and Mayo Chorus. Now, Tuesday night, we're going to have our United Voices. Somebody said, when would the 8 o'clock choir sing? When the 11 o'clock choir? I ain't doing all that stuff. We're singing together. Amen. 
if you can't sing down here together, quit talking about singing in heaven together. Amen, somebody. Eight and eleven and others, we're gonna sing together on that Tuesday night. Wednesday night, women's day choir, and that's it. Amen, somebody. You don't have to invite 25 choirs. Each choir give you $25.42. And then you got to go back to them and give them $25. Because they keep record of it down to the penny of what you have given. Amen, somebody? So our three-night revival, we're going to all leave refreshed, and we're going to be excited. Then on the fourth Sunday, our Women's Day program, May the 26th, we're going to have Reverend Deborah White of our Raymond Christian Center. Deborah was with us last year. And each woman in asked to give a spiritual donation of $100. And I told you last week, if you don't have the $100, tell your boo to give it to you. <laughs> Amen, somebody. If you're dating somebody and they can't give you $100, which is a C note, tell them, see you later. Y'all don't hear me in here. Hey, you can't get 100 for you when you're dating. It ain't going to change when you get married. Let us stand as we get rid of our scripture. First of all, to all our mothers, we say happy Mother's Day to you. Let's give all our mothers a wonderful hand on today. <laughs> scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 21. It said, said, if you find it, say amen. If you don't, say, I see it on the screen, Reverend. Question is, what if the screen wasn't working? <laughs> uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 21 through 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, the son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Stop there. In other words, this was a woman. The woman had a daughter that made her a mother. So this qualifies for a mother they son. <laughs> All right. This, this woman went to Jesus on behalf of her child. Every mother in here, at some point in your life, you've had to go to Jesus on behalf of your child. But look at verse 23. She went to Jesus, but here's what's confusing about the text. Verse 23, but he answered her not a word. I'm going to the Lord on behalf of my child, but Lord, as the street say, you ain't saying nothing. My child is in trouble. I need to hear from you, but I haven't heard a word. Look at the pastor, look at the crew. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send that mom away, send that mother away, because she's crying after us. In other words, they can say sin away. It's not their child. It's easy for somebody else to tell you to send something away when it's not their child. But if when it's your child, good Lord have mercy. Verse 24 of the text. But he also said, I'm not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Every mother has been there at some point. Lord, and, and, and African-American mama punctuated everything, Lord Jesus, <laughs> help me. Verse 25 said, what, was that 25 I just read? I don't know where I was. Okay, go to 26. <laughs> but he asked and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dog. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Verse 28, and then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt in her daughter. Because the mother didn't give up on the child, 
even though the disciples told Jesus sent her away, the mama went to the Lord on behalf of her child, and because of that, her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Daughter was in trouble. Mother went before Jesus. Others tried to stop her, but because of the mama's faith, the daughter was made whole from that very hour. I just want to talk a little while today about good news for good mothers.
Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse 21 through 28. Again, I wish all mothers a happy Mother's Day. I mean mothers who are here with us and those who have been transformed from labor on the reward. That spirit is still alive and with us today. Amen. Let's celebrate their memory. Amen, 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 amen. The songwriter picked up on this when he said, precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, sacred secrets unfold. See, Mother's Day is a time when we lift up all womanhood. I say that because we lift up all women on this day, not only those who are specifically or biologically mothers, but because there are many women who are shared in the responsibility of mothering our black children. Our mothers have not only been those who have borne their own children, our mothers have been older sisters who have raised a family when death or some other circumstances took natural mothers away. Our mothers have been grandmothers far beyond their childbearing years. There have been aunts and some of whom have never had children of their own. Our mothers have been relatives and friends of our family who have taken children under their wings. Our mothers have been persons of compassion who have served as foster parents who accepted those with whom the major connecting link would not biologically but love. Our mothers have been teachers, some of whom did not have their own children, but who served as role models for and taught us so much about kindness and about character. Our mothers have been women of the church who thought enough of us to work with us, correct us when we were wrong, encourage us when we were downcast, and pray for us when we did not realize it. We've had special mothers in our lives. Things have changed just a little bit because it used to be that if someone corrected your child and your child was wrong, you didn't have a problem with that. But things are changing now. The children can be just as wrong as they can be and their parents will get mad if you try to correct them saying that's just the way they are, but they need to change. Amen, somebody. Our parents never condoned us doing wrong. It was all right for another adult to correct us because we knew the correction was being done out of love. The reason children fly off the handle quick is because mamas are flying off the handles quick. If your child is out of line, you ought to want somebody who's concerned about your child to help bring that child back in line. Let the church say amen. And then y'all try to catch me up in all that stuff. I'm going to come to me and tell my pastor her hymn too short. Well, let her mother go talk to her in the church. Eh? I ain't getting in all that kind of stuff. Amen, somebody. You want me to get in a battle that's not even my battle. It, it, it would be that some Christian woman, some Christian sister can pull that young lady to the side. And they first all they say, come here, baby. When they say, come here, baby, that normally seals the deal. Cause come here, baby, has affection with it. Like, what I'm saying to you is not to hurt you, but what I'm saying to you is to help you. See, Mother Day is especially significant in the black community because of our history. Motherhood on these shores began in the dark and dreary backdrop of slavery. From the onset, slavery was designed to disrupt stable black families. One-parent families became all too characteristic of our history. And single parents, let me help you with something. You need to stop saying, when I raised my child all by myself, you may not have had a man in the house with you, but you had the man watching over you. Oh, I wish I had a prayer in church. Because you can't raise a child by yourself. There, there's too much stuff going on, too much drama that's going on. But how many of you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side? I, I wish I had some praying mamas in here. 
How many of you know that God kept you when you felt like throwing in the towel? God kept you when it didn't look like you had much to work with. That God kept you when the child support check didn't come. That God kept you when you had to do without so that your child could have. That God kept you clothed in your right mind. That God kept you from losing your mind. Well, I wish I had some prayer warriors in here. You didn't do it all by yourself, but you had grace on one side. You had mercy on the other side. And sure Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And more time than we care to admit that one parent was a mother. God gave mothers a double portion of, of grace, dreams, hope, strength, and determination to make life better for their children. Most mothers want things better for their children than they had. There's no mother like a black mother. Hmm? Whenever they have commercials on TVs, athletes sign contracts and they put them in front of the microphone, the first thing they say, hi mom. I ain't heard one yes say hi dad. Cause they acknowledge who was there with him. See sometimes dad show up late in the picture after the contract has been signed. After graduation, uh, but mama's been struggling every step of the way. Ah, uh, we, why I say, and I remember my mama teaching me some things. I'm just going back to Fort Valley, Georgia now. Mama used to say, you better save some money for a rainy day. Huh? In the business world, we talk about assets, liabilities, and net worth. In other words, we say, if you keep your assets high, keep your liabilities low. When you subtract your liabilities from the assets, that's going to give you your net worth. Mama used to put it this way, don't bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> uh, Mama used to say, Ricky, be careful, a dog that brings a bone will surely... Mm. She used to remind me that trouble don't last always. We used to walk around the house and you... And see, in our house, you didn't have a choice of what you were going to eat, whatever was put on the plate. Huh? It wasn't, well, you better eat your vegetable to grow up big and strong. Either you eat or you're hungry. Do I have a witness in here? And how many of you notice this? I, I want you to notice if you never paid attention. Usually, mama do the serving, and mama is the last one to sit down and eat. Why is that? Because mama want to make sure there's enough for everybody else. Because mama has learned how to do without. And she want to make sure that the family is taken care of. Now, you don't have to finish it. Maybe this one said around your house. This said around my house. When, you know, boys were called mannish. Sit your mannish self down, boy. Girls were called omblish. Sit your fast omblish self down, girl. And when you didn't listen, the mama will remind us a hard head makes a salt. Now, let me press on, let me press on. Let me press on. I wish I had a little help here today. And then, if you drop food on the floor, you didn't pick it up and throw it in no trash. Drop that piece of meat on the drop that piece of pork chop on the floor if you want to. How about you gonna pick it up and throw it in the trash? Mama said that all that won't kill you was shown the fat you. So you didn't throw nothing on the floor. You follow me? I was coming in the back door recently from the church and I had just went out and ordered a sandwich, was eating in the car, and the corner of it was good. When you get to the corner, y'all. Ain't nothing like the corny. You see what I'm saying? I told you last week, you can't eat lonely meat unless it's burnt on the edges. Yeah, yeah, y'all don't want to talk to me in here. I, I, I know this is a lobster crowd, but I'm talking about the rest of us. I, I know this is a filet mignon crowd, but I'm, I'm talking about the rest of us, right? We eat stuff like quiche and kale and all that. I, I, I'm just talking about the rest of us, right? 
it was a corner piece and it was good. I, and I was trying to open the door and get the last corner and dropped it on the carpet. Now, it's the difference between carpet and dirt. It's the difference between carpet and pavement, right? So what I did is I, I, I picked it up. I looked to my left. I looked to my right. Mm. I picked it up. <sighs> Blew on it. Do I have a witness in here? Let me tell you, without the best taste in corn I ever had. Mama used to tell us, if you won't work, you'll surely steal. That out of mind is a devil workshop. That everything that glitters is not gold. She used to remind me, Ricky, be careful who you turn your nose up to. Someday you may have to bow down your knees to them. Be careful how you treat folks on your way up the ladder, because you might meet the same folks on the way back down. Hmm? Do I have a witness in here? Ah, uh, she would always remind me. Let me tell you, keys, I always try to throw out at Mother's Day to let you know if you were raised by a black mama. If you were scared to go home, if you had bad grades, you had a black mama. Huh? If you never heard any phrases like time out, I wasn't raised with time out. I was raised with mama going, no, I, I wasn't raised with time out. Uh, I don't know nothing about no time out. That, that, that's a new thing now. Go over there and, and sit in time out and, until I tell you to move. Uh, if mama said don't move, you weren't going to move. She didn't have to tell you to go in time out, right? I grew up learning reflection called duck. You better learn how to duck when she tell you something. Because whatever was close to mama was coming your way. It could be a high heel, a flat heel, it don't matter. If she tell you to move, you better move. You were raised by a black mama, you had to go pick your switch from the backyard and go back and get it if it was too small. And she'll put both of them together and twist them around for the beating you was getting ready to get. You were raised by a black mama. You had to participate in everything the church had. You were in church all days of your life. You were on the choir, the usher bowl, the Easter program, the junior program, the little miss program. You were raised by a black mama. You were told to turn off the lights and TV when it was lightning during the thunderstorm because that's God talking whenever the thunder is coming out. Oh, I wish I had a little help in here. You were raised by a black mama if you had to go next door and get a cup of sugar, a cup of meal, or a stick of butter. You were raised by a black mama if she told, and she would always tell you, don't you ever leave this house and whatever you have underneath your clothes is not clean. You better not leave here with no raggedy underwear on and no nasty underwear on and you get sick somewhere and they got to take you to the doctor and they talk it all over town about loose your boy head on some nasty underwear. Huh? You raised by a black mama, you heard to say, Lord, please don't let me hurt this child. That's, that's a black mama that's talking there. And mama, let me throw this out as I embark on this text and not hold you long. Single parents who are raising your children. If the person you dating can't accept you and your kids, then you need to cut it loose now. You better tell them the we's come together. We're a package deal. You can't love me and not love my children, and I'm not going to put you before my children, right? Because, see, these are the children I gave birth to, so if you say you love me, you can't help but to love my children. Let me press on lest I hold you long today. Jesus had traveled about 30 miles to the region of Tyre and Sidon. These were port cities on the Mediterranean Sea north of Israel. Both cities had flourishing trade and were very wealthy. Jesus withdrew to Gentile territory to evade the opposition of the Pharisee. The Gentiles were unclean as far as the Jews were concerned. In fact, Jews referred to the Gentiles as dogs. That Jesus would minister to the Gentiles was no surprise, though at that time the emphasis was on ministering to Israel. The demonized Jesus was trying to remain hidden, but then he had news of this woman who came to him. But somehow this Canaanite woman heard what Jesus was and came to him with her need. Keep in mind that our Lord responded to this woman as he did, not to destroy her faith, but to develop it. 
Her own replies showed that she was growing in faith and unwilling to let him go without getting an answer. Uh, godly Samuel Rutherford stated that this principle is perfectly, it is faith that works to claim and challenge loving kindness out of all the roughest strokes of God. When she approached him as son of David, she was definitely putting herself on Jewish ground. And this she could not do because she was a Gentile. Of course, this title did reveal her faith in him as the Messiah God, for the son of David was a name for the Messiah. Since she came to him on Jewish term, he was silent. Of course, he knew her heart, and even his silence encouraged her to continue asking. Impatient with her persistent following and crying out, the disciples said, send her away. We're not really sure what they meant. Give her what she wanted, just get rid of her, or just get rid of her. In either case, they were not showing much compassion for either her or her demonized daughter. Our Lord's reply in Matthew 15 and 24 indicates that they probably wanted him to answer her request. Three insights from this text, and I'll be out of your way on this Mother's Day. First of all, good news for good mother. The good news, number one, is that God heals your petition. In other words, God heals your cry. And because God heals your cry, I want you to know that he will answer you by and by. The text said in 21, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, and she cried, she petitioned unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thy son of David, my daughter, is grieved as vexed with the devil. First of all, she cried for mercy. No matter the need, Jesus can never turn from a desperate cry for his mercy. Uh, but two things are essential. One must cry for mercy, and one must cry to him. Be careful who you cry to. Though you must cry to the true Lord. Many cry, but not to him. She cried for the son of David to hear her. She cried not for herself, but for another person, her love for her daughter. The woman had a desperate need. Her daughter was under the power of Satan. And can I say this today, mother, our children are still up under the attack of the devil. But I came by with fresh news today, fresh all today, that the devil is a liar, that the devil cannot have our children, the devil cannot have our sons, and the devils cannot have our daughters. For this mother truly loved another person, her own daughter. She loved so deeply that she considered her daughter's problem her own. Have mercy on me, she cried. Her love was much more than a normal love of sympathy. It was true oneness, a union of living between her and her daughter that she felt. She approached the right person. She approached Jesus himself and cried out for mercy. Despite her inadequate understanding of him, she did the right thing. She approached the true Lord and cried for his mercy. My brothers and sisters, we still have to petition and cry out to the Lord for mercy. Do I have a witness in here? We still have to cry out on behalf of our children. It doesn't matter what they're doing right now, they're still your child. And you gotta cry out to the Lord on behalf of your child. Yes, his mother daughter was sick, God. But this mother knew that she was tormented by Satan. And this mother didn't give up on a child. Uh, I don't care who else around you. Uh, may give up on your child. Uh, mama can't give up on baby girl. Uh, mama can't give up on a son. Uh, do I have a witness to help? If mama gives up on him, uh, the chances are very slim for them. Uh, do I have a praying church? Uh, Every now and then, holy than thou church folks uh, may want to give up on your children. Tell them that's what you may think. Uh, tell them God is not through with my baby yet. Uh, God is not through with my child yet. Because uh, God has his hand on my child. Uh, that's why the devil is attacking right now. But when the devil start missing, the Lord start blessing. And because of who God is, uh, I'm going before God. And I'm, I'm going to pray for my child. Uh, don't you get so holy if your daughter comes home and tell you she's pregnant. Don't you get so 
so holy that you put your child out because what other folks are saying don't you get so holy that you don't have time for your child all of us have messed up all of us have made mistakes all of us have fallen short but I thank God for his grace I thank God for his mercy it's to anybody here that's glad this morning that God loves you and God loves you unconditionally she cried she made a petition to the Lord for his mercy look in the Bible the record is clear Matthew 20 20 through 22 then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her son worshiping him and his eye on a certain thing of him and he said unto her what will thou she said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit one on the right hand, the other on the left in the kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said unto him, We are able. A lot of folks were hard on Zebedee's wife because she made a petition on behalf of her children. But every parent ought to want the best for their children. But the best ought to line up with what the will of God has for your child. 2 Kings 4, 34 and 37 talks about the Shulamite woman. Talks about Elijah the prophet. That he went up and laid upon the child because received news that the child was dead. He put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. Then he returned and walked into the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed some seven times. I wish I had time to deal with the number seven, but I got to press on. And the child opened up his eyes, and he called Jehazah and said, Call this sure mighty woman. So he called her, and when she was come unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went and fell at his feet, bowed herself to the ground, took up her son and went out. In other words, her child was dead. But God sent a prophet by the name of Elijah there, who laid upon a child till the child came back to life. If, if, if you put it in the Lord's hand, what looks dark, the Lord can make a bright side out of it somewhere. If you put the situation in the Lord's hand, I'm a living witness that he may not come when you want him, but when he comes, not if he comes, but when he comes, uh, he's always on time. Uh, is there any mother here to know that we serve an on time God? Look at your son now. Uh, look at your daughter now. Uh, and look at all the prayers you were making. Uh, and God's still here in answer prayer. Do I, do I have a witness to that? How many know God will hear your faintest cry? How many know he will uh, answer you by and by? I ought to have some praying mamas in here. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm here today because uh, I had a praying mama. I'm glad that somebody prayed for me, that somebody had me on their mind, that somebody took the time uh, to call my name and pray. Uh, I have a witness in here. That's why you ought to pray for your children, because your mama prayed for you. Uh, your grandmama prayed for you. Uh, your big mama prayed for you. Uh, your nana prayed for you. Uh, to have a living witness in here, that prayer still works. Uh, that ought to be a praise release right there. That prayer still works. Uh, I don't hear you in here this morning. That prayer still work. Uh, I can't feel you right now, but prayer still works. Uh, somebody's holding off on their praise, uh, but prayer still works. Uh, somebody don't want to give him the glory, but prayer still works. Uh, somebody's child is sick now, but prayer still works. Uh, somebody's child is in jail now, but prayer still works. Good news for good mothers. First of all, God hears your petition. Don't stop calling on him. Good news for good mothers. 
God will give you a dose of his patience. What he said in Pastor, verse 23 of the, uh, chapter 15 said, but he asked her not a word. You see, after the word, he answered not a word, you got a period. You know what that means? Stop. English 101. Comma, pause. Period means stop. Don't go any further. But he answered her not a word. Have you ever been there, mama? For you're trying to find an answer to what happening. You go to God and he don't say anything. You could understand if the answer was just no. You could understand if it was maybe. But it don't say a word. Your heart is heavy. But it don't say a word. Seems like the weight of the shoulder, weight of the world is upon your shoulder. But it don't say a word. Your child is in trouble. And you're going to the one who told you that trouble don't last. But he don't say a word. You know the psalmist said he's our refuge and our strength. He's our very present help in the time of trouble. But he don't say a word. Have you ever been there? Three years ago when he called my son home from labor to reward and I called on him and I didn't hear a word. Other mothers in here, maybe your child has gone home to be with the Lord and, and, and you've been crying, you've been praying, your heart is heavy and some days are better than other days and you walk in the house, you walk in his room and tears start flowing but you can't hear a word. from the God of comfort but you're not receiving any comfort maybe God has called mama home and you still have mama clothes hanging in the room cause you can't move nothing and all you want to do is hear a word other folks telling you that God takes the best I want to hear that. I'm not in no garden. I ain't trying to pluck that nut. I just need something to soothe my heart. I need something to, to give me joy in the midst of what I'm feeling. But I can't get a word. He answered not a word. His disciples came and besought him saying, send away. She's getting on our nerve. Every time you look around, she here talking about help her child. Tired of her. Don't want to be bothered no more. But the woman continued to fall after them. And she continued to shout. Finally, the disciples urged Jesus to tell her to leave. Jesus always has compassion. He would heal the woman's daughter. But not to make her stop following them, he had a lesson about faith that he needed to teach this woman. In doing so, he would teach the disciples a lesson as well. He didn't say a word. But Philippians 4 and 6 says, that Don't be careful for nothing. Tells believers, Don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And he'll give you a peace. That surpasses all on the sand. He'll give you a dose of patience. The psalmist said in 27, 13, and 14, I had fainted, lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What, is, what shall you do, mama? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. I say, wait on the Lord. Psalmist 41 and 3 said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me, and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a harbor pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. And guess what he'll do? He'll put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. 
After all, when Jesus said, I was sent only to help the people of Israel, not the Gentile, remember this, he was in Gentile territory. Well, I'm getting ready to press so to close now. Good news for good mothers. First of all, he you hear your petition. Don't stop calling on him on behalf of your child or your children. Second of all, he'll give you a patience. When it seems like you can't go any farther, he'll step in, and he'll step right in on time. Third and final, the Lord told me to tell your mother to be persistent. Ah, petition, patient and persistent. Ah, verse 25 said, the same came. She came and worshiped, saying, Lord, help me. Look at verse 25. Is that not good news there? Then came she. The mother came. Even after the Lord had not said a word to her, even after the disciples said, sin away, the mother came and worshipped him. That's good news right there. And she said, Lord, help me. That shout me happy right there. Even if everything else was against her, she came and worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. Because the mother knew that she needed a breakthrough. For her daughter was grievously sick. It didn't matter what anybody else said. The lady came and worshipped him. While she was worshipping him, she said, Lord, help me. Well, I wish I had a prayer church. That's good news right there. In other words, nobody seemed to care. But it was the lady's daughter. It was the lady's child. On this Mother's Day, can I encourage you, no matter how things look, uh, you ought to make your way and worship him and say, Lord, help me. That's good news right there. I'm trying to turn down a loose stop, but I can't turn it a loose stop. Even if it was not Mother's Day, it's good to come and worship him and then turn around and say, uh, Lord, help me. Uh, is that good news for anybody there? I don't know how you feel, but that's good news, my brothers and my sister. Well, the lady was persistent. Uh, but look at verse 28 of the text. Uh, because the lady was persistent, Jesus asked and said unto her, O woman, uh, great is thy faith. Uh, be it unto thee even as thy will. And her daughter was made whole uh, from that very hour. That's good news right there. Somebody ought to be able to shout for joy. Because that's good news right there. That she was uh, persistent on behalf of a child. Uh, and a child uh, received a miracle. Her child uh, received her blessing. Because mama would not give up uh, to have any mothers in here that's made up in their mind. Uh, on behalf of my child, uh, I'm going to make my way to the Lord. Uh, and I will, I will worship him. Uh, do I have a witness in him? Well, I wish I had a praying church. Uh, good news for good mothers. Uh, if you just keep on uh, making your petition, if you just keep on being patient, if you keep on being persistent, the Lord will show up uh, and he'll show up right now. Uh, somebody shout right now. Uh, for verse 28 said, uh, in that very same hour, the daughter did receive her healing. Somebody ought to praise him. Uh, because I stopped by to tell you, your child may be going through something, but the Lord can show up, uh, and he'll show up right now. Uh, he'll show up in the same hour. Is there anybody here that need a breakthrough for your child? Uh, is there anybody here that need a miracle for your child? Uh, is there anybody here 
that need the Lord uh, to show up in your child's life. Uh, it says she worshiped him. Uh, is there anybody here that's made up in your mind uh, that you're going to worship God uh, and worship him in spirit and in truth? Uh, I dare you to give him a praise uh, for what he's getting ready to do uh, in your child's life. Uh, tell the devil you should have kept me down uh, while you had me down. Uh, now I'm going to worship God uh, on behalf of my child because God is getting ready to turn it around. Uh, shout, turn it around. Uh, shout, turn it around. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, uh, but my child deserves a blessing. My child deserves God's favor. My child deserves a miracle. I dare you to put your hands together for the miracle that's on the way. Is there anybody here that can praise my God for an on the way miracle? I dare you to put your hands together and shout on the way. Shout on the way. Tell him he may be on drugs right now. But a miracle is on the way. Uh, my daughter may be in a bad relationship, but God is getting ready. They're turning around, turning around, turning around, uh, turning around, uh, turning around, uh, turning around. Uh, I dare you to praise him uh, like you're about to lose your mind. Uh, is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that loves my Lord? I see a breakthrough on the way. I see a miracle on the way. I see healing on the way. But the Lord told me to tell you, your deliverance for your child is in your praise. Uh, can I say that again? Your deliverance uh, for your child uh, is in your praise. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Uh, your deliverance uh, for your child uh, is in your praise. Uh, Y'all don't hear me. Your deliverance uh, for your child uh, is in your praise. Uh, if you know that, uh, you ought to praise them in here for your child. Praise them for baby girl. Praise them for your boy. Praise them for what he's getting ready to do. Is there anybody here that has good news uh, for good mothers? Uh, everything, 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 everything is going to be all right. Go ahead and pray. Praise him for your children. Come on, bombers. Praise him. Praise him for your children, mama. Don't let nobody stop your mama. Go ahead and praise him, mama. Go ahead and praise him, mama. Go ahead and praise him, mama. I dare you to praise God for your children. I dare you to give God your highest praise. I dare you to tell him thank you. I dare you to shout glory. I dare you to shout hallelujah. I dare you to shout yes, Lord. 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 Yes. Good news for good mothers. Always petition the Lord on behalf of your child. He'll give you patience and always be persistent. Don't stop. Come on, Reverend.
gone back old school today. There may be someone here today up under the sound of my voice. I want to step out from where you are today as the choir is leading us. Give your hand to the pastor, but give your heart to God. You desire membership by letter by your Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. On this Mother's Day, the door of the church is open. Will you come at this time and desire membership with our church family? Yes, yes. You have to make up your own mind. Will you come on this Mother's Day? Good news for good mothers. If you're going to go to Jesus on behalf of your children,